doing things that I have to do. Yeah, the life projects. Exactly, <laughs> you know, and I don't mean to, but that's that's the read in me, I think. Yeah, and yeah. that's what's so relatably uh, dysfunctional about them. Exactly. That, uh, I think but, we could all relate to one of them at one point in time of our lives, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let's talk uh, Ben and Johnny. Ben and Johnny. Ben and Janny. Janny um, from Yancey Street. Um, <laughs> um, they're they're the they're almost like the brothers they never wanted. <laughs> yeah. He was, uh, Johnny is the little brother that Ben never wanted, and just reciprocated back. You know. Um, yeah, they didn't even know each other initially. It's just because Sue and Reed just came together. It's like, oh hey, how, well, what are you about? Shut up, kid. It's like, oh, that's how you're gonna be, and then st- starts lighting his oh, stuff yeah. on fire, like. They didn't sure. know each other beforehand. <laughs> there was actually uh, this one part uh, to just draw back in the movie that I thought was hilarious was when their powers were switching. Uh-huh. And then um, we had found this out with the scene where Invisible Girl and uh, the Human Torch switch powers because they touched each other and there's, there's something wrong with them. Uh-huh. And then so Sue turns invisible and then, sorry, um, Johnny turns invisible and then Sue is completely on fire. Uh-huh. And so she's freaking out. And then she sees Reed in like a window pane. And she's like, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. <laughs> and then Reed's like, oh, my God, you're on fire. He's like, duh. You know, like, and then uh, they get back into their lab. And then so their powers are switched. And then Ben was just like, what if I touch Johnny? And then Johnny's like, don't, don't even think about it. Because Johnny, like this hotshot, wants to turn into a rock monster? I don't think so. Oh. So then he goes and touches him, and then Johnny Storm becomes a thing. Uh, but Johnny gives him the worst time for it. It's like, oh, hey, rockhead. Exactly. Oh, and then, okay. uh, which movie was this? This was uh, the first one. Oh, the first one. The, okay. Not the 94 one. The, okay. <laughs> yeah, the first, the one with Jessica Alba in them. Um, but yeah, no, I, they, they have that kind of relationship yeah, where they, they just love like each to other. tease each other. Yeah, yeah. They do, of course, <laughs> of course they love each other. Um, and then that, you know what, let's talk about our favorite runs. And mm. I think we have a similar or the same favorite run. I think we do. Yeah. That's a you want to say it on the, uh, say it at the same time? In unison. One, two, three. Hickman. Jonathan Hickman. Mc- ah, Eagle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was Jonathan Hickman's run, which was the run right before they just they kind of disappeared in marvel world uh there was a bit before that with fraction yeah. oh no and then hickman took the reins again yeah. and something something secret wars and i didn't keep up with that part yeah it was like 2014 2015 uh-huh. with uh with hickman i love that run yeah oh my gosh did I ever yeah that first uh, guys if you need like a recommendation mm-hmm. just pick up just that, that first one. trade because they the first concept they go into just right away, mm-hmm. it's going to be a read piece and it's about him, uh, yeah, um, meeting a whole council of other reads and of eat other all them. Reads. The yeah. council of reads. The council of reads. Yeah. Now I know where uh, the council of Ricks and Rick and Morty came from. It's <laughs> yeah, just like exactly. a bunch of uh, like universally intelligent people all in one place to become multiversally intelligent. Gosh, and, can you, I can't even imagine like a real world with like a council of read. Yeah. And. And he does that, and they just solve all the problems of the universe. Oh, yeah, we got a few Infinity Gauntlets here. We've solved uh, Hunger. We got in... it on sale at Walmart. Yeah. Exactly. In my dimension. <laughs> in my dimension, we sell these uh, in bulk. And oh, my so, gosh. Um, oh, shoot, what was I, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, so you see, you have a whole dimension full of uh, reads, and our read of 616, the stretchy mm-hmm. guy, he looks like the weird one. In, yeah, in the he's group. like the out-of-place guy. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, you see, usually with uh, other dimensional stuff, you meet mm-hmm. other versions of you. They're like, oh, here's the cowboy you, here's mm-hmm. the you that likes uh, chocolate mm-hmm. as much as you and like vinegar. There was there was a read that looked like Professor X. Yeah. There was a chubby read. Uh, oh, yeah. I love chubby read. There was, yeah, there's so there was, many um, there was a ro- There's a Rocky read. Yeah, There's Rocky like read. the thing, but also... It sounds like he, a Baskin Robbins flavor, that one. Hi, I would like to order one a scoop Rocky of Rocky read, read <laughs> and add some Human Torch on it. Oh, you want me to melt it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, but like, yeah, he looked like the 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 weird one in the group, yeah. the stretchy guy. Oh, okay. I think like th- that's one of my favorite things about the Hickman run, and the second thing is probably finding out a lot more about um, um, Franklin. Franklin. Yeah. yeah. My gosh, like I never, 
uh, could have imagined, you know, like that kid, like and what he could, he, who he really is, essentially. How much can we spoil about it? Um, I don't want to spoil too much about it, but let's just say that Galactus is scared of this boy. He's dang. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's he's just not. I mean, Galactus in itself is just like a. What do we call him? A cosmic... Um, he, he's a god. He's a god. Yeah, you know. He's... <laughs> he eats planets for dinner. And then, yeah. you know, there's this kid. It's like, oh, Reed, can you just, you know, put him in the corner over there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's the one that, you know... And, like, Hickman's run was uh, was great, not only for that one arc, but mm-hmm. every arc of that was about uh, taking what was existing about the Fantastic Four and just kind of... And their world and just, like, extending it beyond. So you mm-hmm. have the Inhumans. And then you get oh, yeah. the Universal mm-hmm. Inhumans, in which, you know, uh, similar things to Terra Genesis happened on other planets, other aliens. So they mm-hmm. got their own Inhumans. I don't actually come to think of it. I don't know why they call it themselves Inhumans. If I'm like a horse guy, <laughs> why would <laughs> I, I define myself like I'm an in I am an in Martian? Yeah. Well, yeah, you're from Earth. <laughs> yeah. No, I just. You know what? Let, oh, let yeah. the Marvel gods take care of that. Yeah, I, I guess know. so. That's it, that's what I loved about the run. But what I didn't like so much was that uh, you know the Fantastic Four all about exploration. There wasn't that mm-hmm. as much, much exploration, just playing with the pieces that existed and extending those. That's right. There was yeah. quite a bit of exploration, but and there was so much. I mean, like they give a, they give a lot of homages to like the team ups that happened back in like the day with like Kirby and them because yeah. Spider Man was there too. Yeah, there was like what was it? I think it was like the volume seven. It was like the uh, a later volume when it was in trade paperback that Spider Man. Um, so, so someone dies, okay, mm-hmm. and then uh, Spider-Man consoles Franklin, and I love that whole issue because, like, you could really tell, like, the humanity and the importance of the relationship between Spider-Man and Franklin. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Where, yeah. It, like that, especially that final page where it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, he's taking him swinging around the town. I'm going to make you feel better, kid, uh-huh. because, like, saving the world isn't about punching bad guys, but making people saving people from like the emotional holes yeah exactly yeah. exactly so hey man if you guys haven't checked out any fantastic four stuff at all we're definitely on that jonathan hickman run and yeah, we yeah. recommend it just, just start with the first trade yeah see how it goes like if you don't like it then you can put it down yeah but... you're gonna like it yeah, come, gonna on. Like it. come, come on. on come on <laughs> um and there's also just just geek out about the future foundation lenny I love the Future Foundation. Yeah. That's it. No, I'm that's joking. It. <laughs> Drop mic. That's so, it. Uh, so, um, but the other thing I love about Reed is that he's very forward thinking. And mm-hmm. so he's, uh, when he started the Future Foundation, he's all about like, I want to, uh, I don't want everything to just stop with us. And I, I'm sick of, uh, you know, apocalypse culture and like, mm-hmm. look at uh, us being doomed. So he had, uh, collects a bunch of uh, kids with, a bunch of uh, different abilities, mostly having to do with intelligence and getting them to engineer the future. That's right. So you got uh, Valeria, his daughter, who's smarter than him. Yeah. Uh, you got Franklin, who's just uh, ultra powerful. Uh, Bentley's 23. My Your favorite, favorite dude. My favorite dude. Yeah. I love watching this kid kick people in the nuts <laughs> all the time. But okay, so uh, yeah, Bentley 23 is a uh, child clone of the, the villain, the wizard. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's great just because, you know, he's like, I want to subject you. I am going to rule over you one day. Yo, kid, calm down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll have I'm my sorry. chocolate now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's, there's Bentley 23. There's like uh, Anome from um, from Wakanda. You got the little Moloids. And I love their. Uh, Who's the green little kid again? Uh, Leech. That's Leech. Leech. Oh, I love that yeah, kid too. Fr- uh, Franklin's yes. best friend. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> And, um, uh, yeah, there's, yeah, the Moloids are fun too. Cause like one of them's got a flo- floating head and there's this, just this one panel that will stick with me for life from fractions run of FF mm-hmm. where just like one of them's just like talking to She-Hulk and while drinking some, uh, drinking some nail polish. Cause <laughs> that's how their <laughs> that's bodies just, work. Yeah. Yeah. That- that signs for you there, man. Yeah. And, well, like, there's a bunch of other kids, but, yeah. like, the great yeah. thing about them is that they're engineering a future mm-hmm. beyond them, and it's something to last, and they bring in new ideas. So it's just yeah. read times 10. That's right. Yeah. It's, you know what, it's it's nice because um, I was just talking to a friend of mine about this, but, you know, there are some people that are, are collectors from, like, their, probably in their 40s and 50s now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they have uh, a different world and hopefully they want to share that with, like, the future generations to yeah. kind of move forward with the industry. 
but some of them are very reluctant to share this knowledge with the, the younger generation because they're set into their dog eat dog world. Mm-hmm. When our world, actually, I feel like the the millennials to zennials, whatever the hell you call the eighty fivers, um, we're collaborators. Yeah. You know, we're we're a little bit selfish, but not to the point where we're not going to share what we know with you because we're trying to you know amalgamate things and we're trying to move forward with stuff and build things together exactly and just to you know whitney houston this whole thing like Mm -hmm. i believe the children are a friggin' future and it's true and that's what the future foundation is about that's what they are all about it's great like i never uh i never thought i could uh enjoy seeing uh, seeing stories about kids because i've seen them all the time and then there was stranger things but there's also yeah the future foundation i don't know do you like them yeah, I like them. Like, I mean, I, I haven't read a lot about them, but, uh, like, the ones that I that, that I know about them from the Hickman run, yeah. totally enjoy it. I feel um, like that's all you need to know. That's or, about, well, like, yeah. you can always, there's always more to explore, but, like, uh, with so <laughs> Harping many Harping back to our intro everything. there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, they, like, with so much stuff out there, you don't necessarily have to read everything, everything, right? No, yeah. yeah Just so. the essence of it. You could you could feel it out. Yeah. Um, and then the, the last thing that I wanted to talk about, you know what, they are back. Uh, Marvel 2 and 1 was leading up to it and uh last week wednesday uh the first uh, wednesday of august uh dan slott and sarah pacelli um they're 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 doing fantastic four it's the first fantastic four um co- magazine that we've seen in a, in a long time since the hickman run what do you think of it it was it was a first issue that's how it felt like <laughs> and that's how i'm going to describe it um know, like in a bad way in a good way no i think in a in a good way it's a, it's as expected you know like the first issue kind of uh it's like the early marination mm-hmm. of uh, of the run especially when you know they've been in hiatus for so long yeah so it's not like there's some crazy thing that's going to happen right away I thought there was a crazy thing was it the one with ben yeah the one with ben cuz he's not crazy he should have done that a long time ago. Oh my well, gosh! Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Spoiler alert, guy, uh, by the way, guys. But you should totally read that um, that yeah, issue. I'm totally okay with spoiling this yeah. because we're gonna do it, dude. It's like the first issue, and it's the one thing that happens that I think you know if if it's something's gonna attract you to this um, it's gonna be ben it's gonna on be one it's knee. gonna be ben yeah <laughs> um <laughs> well ben and alicia have been together on and off on and off and alicia's like honestly the, the most understanding mm-hmm. you know woman there is to a partner of a rock monster but yeah and like this is kind of her perfect guy because she likes rocks she likes rocks she man. Likes rocks you know teach their own she's a sculptor <laughs> that's it oh yeah that's right yeah. exactly um but finally in a, in a was it a rooftop setting um, go on. It sounds like a rooftop setting. Okay, we on. have We're the comic fl- uh, right through. here. What, like, what, uh, what do you mean the rooftop setting when the, they the, were... The, the on bended knee part. The boys to men part of the, uh, of the comic. That no, one? not that oh, one. Okay. Yeah, it's it's. So basically, what we're trying to get at here is, oh no, no. no. So oh, Ben yes. shows up in Alicia's um, condo with with a ring. And on his bended knee with, like, a 24 dozen roses, um, he pops the question. And she doesn't even let him finish. She no. just says yes immediately. Because, dude, if you've been waiting since the 1940s to get married. <laughs> <laughs> then what are you waiting save. for? Oh, my God. He was saving up. I don't know. It's, it's hard for rock monsters to save money. Um, but his baby blues right there, man. And uh, he, he, of course, in, in a few pages after that, asks Johnny to be his best man. And, to which um, he uh, answers... Yeah, he's, he wasn't happy about that, yeah, dude. Yeah, no, he says no, just shouting. I'm like, that's it, like, so dry, Johnny. Why you got to do a man like that? Yeah, but uh, he explains himself, and I can kind of get where he's uh, coming from. He uh, says, no, this is wrong. Yeah. Uh, Reed is supposed to be your best man. Yeah. And you can see that um, Ben and Johnny kind of, like, move forward in their own ways in response to this, in which mm-hmm. uh, Ben kind of dealt with uh, dealt with the fact that they're gone and he's moving forward his way of moving forward is getting uh marrying alicia starting this yeah. new uh, new adventure of starting a family whereas johnny's uh way of moving forward is you know i'm not gonna just stop here and uh you know just 
wallow in sorrow exactly. i'm looking for them and stuff and, and uh, so yeah to me like honestly like i know that people like gripe a lot about dan slot yeah but i think this was a really great refresher for him because he know the thing about dan slot 